Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today, and I got that from Soft Itch, baby. Today, we are talking about Elden Ring for the first time on the channel since its initial leak back at E3 2019. Now, since that reveal, there's been a lot of rumors, speculation, and supposed leaks that have come out for this game, because it's been ever so elusive since its reveal outside of just a couple of interviews that happened at E3 2019. Since then, it's been off the radar and pretty much every major game event since has been speculated to have Elden Ring there, but it still has yet to appear. Now, a lot of people have thought that it's gonna be at the Xbox Game Showcase that's happening on July 23rd. Fingers crossed for that, but today we're getting into a leak that's popped up on the internet. A couple websites have started to cover it, so I thought this would be, at the very least, a good excuse to talk about the game, give some of my thoughts on it, but the information we're taking today is from Fexter Life. So a lot of this sounds plausible, especially given a lot of the information lines up with a trusted leaker, but here is the kicker two points at the end. Mention one, trailer drops on July 21st in the Xbox event, presumably, but that is two days before the Xbox event. Now also it says screenshots should start appearing tomorrow, the day after I'm making this video. So we will find out if that is very much the case, if they're gonna start teasing stuff immediately. The second we do see screenshots, even if it's a couple of days off, it does lend a lot of credibility to this leak because a lot of plans are constantly changing because of the pandemic and there's just various question marks about the whole situation where sometimes companies are ready to reveal a game, it's locked in and it just gets pushed back because they're not sure if they can make that deadline. So things can change. I'm not trying to add too much credibility to this leak, but it's still something that we should keep our eye out for. If we start to see the Elden Ring Twitter account act up a little bit, this would be a good leak to go ahead and reference because they say they worked on Italian translation for the game, which is a bit interesting. Now, as always with these types of leaks, do take them with a grain of salt, but the interesting thing about this supposed leak is that some of what's being said here does line up with what was stated by a very trusted leaker by the name of Omnipotent at the beginning of this year, which is a gigantic write-up about the inspiration of the world, the open world design, and all that stuff. However, that leaker has now hung up their hat. They have uh, said, I'm done with that lifestyle. I'm over it now. So we'll not get any confirmation about whether or not this leak is real here. But still, like I said, it's good fodder for discussion at the very minimum. So let's get this started talking about the gameplay. According to the leak, Elden Ring will have gameplay that is similar to Dark Souls and Dark Souls 3 but slower, with added mobility of jumping like in Sekiro, but specifies no wall jumping, so likely no grappling in this one. But it also lists air dodge, which sounds fairly flexible. There will be no classes, characters will be customizable, much like Bloodborne, with the added mastery coming from covenants and guilds, with plenty of options, more so than all souls combined. You can also travel by a ghost horse that you can summon when needed, and it also carries equipment, which can mean it doubles as inventory storage, but that is unclear. From Software has already confirmed that traveling by mount is a feature in the game, but this leak does mention a phantom horse, and uh, hello, that's a little wild, but it's not out of the realm of possibility for the, the wizards at From Software. Speaking of inventory management, players will experience inventory design similar to that of Demon's Souls, but with easier management. Now, this is a bit peculiar because Demon's Souls Remake was just recently revealed, so the timing there could be either fishy or aid in the actual design of Elden Ring. Granted, though, there are separate developers, Bluepoint Games specifically, working on the Demon Souls remake. All right, so as someone whose favorite Souls-born Kiro game is absolutely Bloodborne, I love that they are gonna chase the character design in that way if this leak is true. I think that offers the sense of flexibility while also allowing you to tailor yourself to a particular build. It focused the game around the weapons, which was really the star in Bloodborne in my opinion, because they all had two different forms, whether you had the saw blade that came out into like a long sword, and there are plenty other, Ludwig's Holy Blade, which was almost like a normal long sword, but then it turns into a great sword when you go ahead and attach it to the piece on your back. There was a lot there, and so I think that the builds could circle around those weapons, and maybe in the case of Elden Ring, armor as well. Now, I don't understand how the game can be slower, but then have mobility to some extent, like Sekiro. I think if it's gonna be open world, you should have a jump button. No one, no one 
likes being glued to the ground. But if there is a jump button, that does mean verticality to some extent. Now, I like that Sekiro had a grappling hook, but I also thought it made traversing around some of the dangers in the world a little easier. And that's one thing that I do at times worry about with an open world structure, which we'll get into a little bit with Elden Ring, is that sometimes it could be easier to navigate around that danger. But what I also like in the plus on the open world side is that it could be a little more aimless, which is what I think was one of the strongest parts of the original Dark Souls was having all those directions you could go in this interconnected world and not really knowing what the right path was. When you totally open that up into an open world setting, it becomes all the more about player choice and really finding out what place is designed for a beginner, what place is going to crunch you because you're not skilled enough or you don't have the right equipment. So I'm going to be really interested to see just how this game is designed in general. Bosses. According to this summary, there will be five main bosses, each in charge of their own kingdom. There are also 12 regular bosses that reside. Health bars will act similar to Sekiro with phases that you must counter. Now Sekiro's boss fights were based around posture, where it wasn't like what we saw in any of the Dark Souls games, any of the Bloodborne games where you were attacking a health bar. In Sekiro, you were really just attacking their posture, attacking their stamina until they were knocked off balance and you could land a killing blow. Now I am in the minority. I wasn't in love with Sekiro. I finished Genichiro's boss fight and I said, you know what? This game really clearly isn't for me. I just wasn't having as good of a time and it wasn't because of even difficulty. It was a game that to me at times was fun to play, but parts of it just didn't click with me. And I'm still struggling to really put together why that's the case because it feels like it's a game made specifically for someone like myself. But anyway, getting off track here, I do like that they're gonna craft bosses around the idea of different phases and separate them by health bars. If they're doing that, does that mean they're gonna take a killing blow idea in some way, shape or form and put that in Elden Ring because we can see in Dark Souls, Bloodborne, Sekiro, each franchise takes inspiration a little bit from each other. So there are always shared elements. Will these be one? We'll see in due time. The world itself, I thought this was the most exciting part. In the terms of the world Elden Ring, there is a day and night cycle with strength in enemies at nightfall, but in usual Souls form, the higher the risk, the higher the payoff with better loot at nighttime. But what's interesting is that bosses will also be stronger at nighttime too. As for other Souls-like elements, there aren't going to be difficulty options, but you will have, quote, refills, end quote, similar to what is seen in Sekiro, health elixirs and items. Bonfires also exist, but the info shares, quote, not literal bonfires, end quote, which could be taken as the cities act as a place of rest instead. Given that the game is about traversing these kingdoms and freeing these kingdoms, supposedly, imagine as you free them, there are a, a population of people that will fill up those kingdoms and now they become living, breathing cities. I mean, do you just leave the mob enemies there? Is that what it becomes at that point? That's one thing I do wonder about a little bit. How does the world change after you free a supposed kingdom? How do you encounter merchants, guilds? I mean, there's gotta be a place for them to aggregate to some extent. Of course, you're gonna have a more living, active world if it's an open world environment. That'll be extremely different for the Souls genre. But I just do wonder sometimes how they're gonna handle that. It'd be really interesting if they let the population fill up one of these kingdoms and you'd go there after finishing one of the boss fights and there would be various vendors and guilds to interact with. I think that'd be pretty cool. I'm genuinely excited about Elden Ring despite knowing nothing about it. Just seeing that there are gonna be mounts, it's gonna be a much more open game. Those are two elements that we really haven't seen in the Soulsborne Kiro genre. And I'm excited to see how they handle that because it can open up a whole world of possibilities. The only danger is that if they do this right, will the expectation going forward be every single time that they make a new Souls game or whatever, that it has to be open world? That is the question mark that's left in my mind because this game, if it's exactly how it's been rumored to be for the last year or so, then what happens in the future? What happens with the Bloodborne 2? Is that now open world? or is each game going to have its own specific design? Uh, a future Sekiro game, what happens there, if there even is one? I, I wonder a bit about that stuff, but hey, we gotta get our Elden Ring first and we'll figure all this out later, right? Let's just, let's just see if Elden Ring even works out, if it's anything like what we expect. But if I were to guess where we'd see it, 
I would say keep an eye out at the Xbox Game Showcase. Elden Ring, after all, was revealed during the E3 2019 conference for Microsoft, so it would only make sense that when they did their Game Showcase here in July that they went ahead and revealed it. I also think part of the reason there's been some radio silence for the game is because it's probably gonna be next generation. I think it's definitely going to be a 2021 title. I think there's just too many elements that scream to me, this game needs a lot of power to run between the mounts, the various boss fights, the mechanics for them, of course, how good the game will look, all of the different builds, weapons, things happening in the world. It is their first foray into open world design, so I feel like they're gonna want all the power behind them. They know the anticipation's there, and I think people's patience will be rewarded. So that'll do it for me, ladies and gentlemen. Those are just my thoughts on Elden Ring and the latest leak that's come out for it. We'll see hopefully in a couple of weeks what this game is all about. Fingers crossed on that one, provided it looks exactly like I hope it does, then I will be covering the game more because you know me, I like covering RPGs. But anyway, I love to hear from all of you in the comments down below. What do you think of the latest Elden Ring leak? Let me know in the comments down below. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. Big thank you to all the patrons who continue to just, I mean, build it up and build it up and build it up. Really appreciate you guys. I'll talk with you soon. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.